What's going on, everybody? It is the Black Dad Chronicles, the Wednesday, December 6th edition of the Black Dad Chronicles. My name is Courtney McIntosh. I am your host. Um, and as always, you can join the conversation on the Black Dad Chronicles Facebook page. And you can also uh, download, rate, subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, CastBox, Pocket Cast, um, wherever you find your podcast. Um, I haven't checked Spotify. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that live on air right now because I do have Spotify. I don't necessarily use Spotify all that much because I use other uh, streaming services, but I like Spotify. I like the look of Spotify. If I if I hadn't already had Google Play Music paid for, I probably would have signed up for Spotify's uh, subscription. All right, so... I am looking right now. All right. Okay, so I'm not on uh, Spotify. Um, So now I have a quest to get the podcast on Spotify. You can also always go to Spreaker.com and support support the uh, podcast that way. Search the Black Dad Chronicles. Uh, I am joined right now by my lovely wife and coupon maven, Robin. <laughs> Hi. How you doing, honey? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Just real, you know, a little rested, just waking up from this nap. Um, actually, I kind of got a headache because I think... You slept too much? I slept too much, and I was kind of scared awake by... Your phone? My phone going off, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but other than that, I'm pretty good. Um, Listen, we have a uh, special christmas theme podcast um, for you this week. Um, I think I'm going to continue that overall theme for the month of December. Christmas? Christmas, yes. Um... But first, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. Sponsors? Well, I really don't have a sponsor. It's set for What's Relaxed by for? Jay Mace. Uh, my buddy Johnny Mason um, takes his time uh, to craft quality um, handmade beaded bracelets. Um, he researches the beads. Um, he studies the beads. So anybody who believes in chakras and energies and all that, he can hook up. He can hook you up. You can, you know, what I'm saying, look out um, for you that way. Um, and he also just, you know, looks at. He gets a design in his head and puts it together. And these are not, you know, these are not bracelets that are gonna uh, break the bank. They are beautiful pieces of jewelry. I have multiple. Multiple. I probably have like seven. And it's not like he's probably. just giving them to me to support, but because I don't wear jewelry. At all. The only jewelry that I usually wear is my watch and my wedding ring. But when he first started making the bracelets, I was like, oh, that's pretty dope. So now I wear bracelets to, and I, you know, I have so many and a couple different colors. You know, I can customize them in my outfit, you know. So um, Relax by J. Mace. You can check them out on Facebook.com slash Relax by J. Mace. M-A-S-E. Uh, or you can find them on Instagram at jmace3000. That's capital J, capital M, A S E, the letter, I mean, the number 3000. All right, so uh, uh, this podcast came to me with a conver- through a conversation with our oldest daughter, Jasmine, last week. Um, she asked me one question, and it was kind of shocked, but I was actually kind of waiting for it. Um, she asked me one question. She said, Dad. Is Santa Claus real? And we had never discussed, you know, the the reality of Santa Claus with our kids. Um, I I typically prefer to let our kids, you know, keep their innocence intact. Until they um, ask us. Yeah, until they ask us. So, and Santa Claus is a part of, or believing in Santa Claus is a part of that myth. I mean, that, uh, that innocence, that childlike wonder, you know. Um... Also, I was also driven by an episode of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air that I that just has always stuck with me. It was uh one of the last seasons. Um, Will was gonna tell Nikki that 
there was no such thing as uh, Santa Claus. And then a, a sexy Christmas elf knocked on the pool house <laughs> door. I believe she was played by Garcelle Bouvet. As a matter of fact, yeah. I have to look this up just to uh, I'm pretty sure confirm. Um, so, yeah, she, uh, you know, Will saw her, was amazed. So, of course, see, see uh, what, he, what did he used to call him? See a Slimmy in a bikini and a Santa Claus hat. You know what I'm saying? You go uh, searching for said pretty lady and... He did, and when he got outside, he found jolly old St. Nicholas sitting there. So then Santa Claus just basically, not just warns him, but just tells him, like, hey, uh, you know, part of that belief in Santa Claus is, you know, the innocence of a child. Why take that innocence? You don't want to take that innocence away. So from that point on, I just, you know, I always said when I, when I had kids, I was just going to let them come to me. Now, our 13-year-old, he doesn't believe in Santa Claus anymore, but he's never, like, brought it to us or anything like that. Um, he's never once said, hey, Dad, is Santa Claus real or anything like that? I think he just, you know, he's in eighth grade. Um, he kind of formed his own conclusion and probably has friends who don't believe in Santa Claus anymore e- either. So, pretty sure they've talked about it. So, he just, you know, always just goes with the flow. So, she asked me, was Santa Claus real? First thing I asked her was like, what do you think, Chaz? What do you think? And to my surprise, she said no. And I was I was generally surprised by that because, you know, Jasmine is 11, and, but she still likes to keep that, that childlike wonderment for so many things. You know, this kind of surprised me. That and the fact and the, that the question was just came totally out of nowhere. We weren't even talking about Christmas. It was just a random question she she brought up so um i told her and i swore her to secrecy because our seven-year-old olivia still believes in santa claus so i said hey whatever y'all do so i told her i also explained to her the origins of santa claus and why and like that it was based off of a real person you know that used to go around and you know give out gifts to poor kids um so, uh, I did tell her that, and I told her, you know, that the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of Santa Claus, is about giving, you know what I'm saying, taking time to actually, you know, give, instead of, like, asking for stuff all the time. Well, I guess, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You, would you say that, honey? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, she said, oh, okay. And Jasmine's really smart. She She's really analytical. Um, so, she took that answer, was like, oh, okay. So I was like, yo, you cannot tell Liv about Santa Claus. And they both was like, hey, Dad, we know. We're not. Trust us. Trust us. And those two I can generally depend on to keep a secret. Now, uh, Olivia, the little one, is the one where I struggle to keep, who struggles to keep a secret. Because she basically gave Jasmine's birthday party away last, last <laughs> month. Um, so, um, my, here's my question for today. And I guess I always have a question for the podcast. Um, is so, you know, honey. Okay, so we 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 did kind of talk about this. So when did you stop believing in Santa Claus? Um, I stopped believing in Santa Claus. I don't remember how old I was, but I walked in on my grandma wrapping my gifts. Um, I walked in on her wrapping my gifts, and it was everything that I had asked her for. Um, and she just didn't bother to, she never said one way or the other if it was Santa, but she, I just never believed after that. Mm. Just because literally everything under the tree wound up being everything that I saw that day. Okay. So it's like, okay, you wrapped everything. I saw everything. Put two and two together. You know, I guess that was it. And about how old were you? I don't remember. I was probably about eight or nine, maybe even ten. But I just remember walking in and finding all the gifts. Like, that was it. Oh, wow. Okay. Like, I really don't know when I stopped believing in Santa Claus. Because, you know, after a while, you know, my mom was like, yo, I'm not going to get y'all... You know, I'm going to get y'all, like, clothes and give y'all some money for Christmas. Boom, there you go. So, I guess once she started doing that, and I think that was maybe around, like, 
I don't know, like maybe 13, 14. Yeah, I probably believed in Santa. I mean, I played with action figures till I was like 16. <laughs> um, so I probably, you know, took me to about like 13, 14 to stop believing in Santa Claus. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, it was a while ago. So, uh, but yeah, I don't know when I stopped believing in Santa Claus. Um, so, um, you know, but hey. I know Santa Claus was, isn't real. Now, I'll be honest. There have been times in the past where I wanted to be like, yo, we just straight up tell the kids there's no Santa Claus. There's no such thing as Santa Claus. Me and your mother, we work hard to earn money throughout the year, and we work hard to put them <laughs> gifts under the tree. Yeah. But then I realized that would be me being selfish. Yeah, that's me. That would be me. I would have no reason to uh, tell the kids that, hey, Santa Claus isn't real. Because here's the thing, you know, some people, I've heard some people argue that, oh, you're lying to your children. I've heard some people say that, you know, it's, you know, believing, you know, especially my Christian homies and we're Christians. So, but it, oh man, believing in, in pagan beliefs and all that, or like, oh man, let's go to the hoteps. Man, I don't celebrate no Santa Claus. Ain't no white man going to be coming down my tree. You know, my chimney, you know, stuff like that. And it's just like, I wanted to, at one point, I really wanted to be like, yo, ain't no Santa Claus. Me and your mom work hard all through the year to get money, and we give y'all what y'all want. But then, that would only benefit me, and it wouldn't benefit our children, you know. So, what what would, I think our kids, especially, you know, seeing the amount of homework that they come home with on a nightly basis... It's like a push out there to make, especially with outside influences and social media and, you know, it's just, it seems like a push to make kids grow up faster, Yeah. you know, and as a person who didn't grow up fast, who grew up actually kind of slow, um, and I think that kind of, in, in most areas, worked well for my development. Um, it was a benefit. Yeah, I think it was a benefit. And so I just don't see the point, you know, of stripping away innocence from a child. Unless yeah. you're doing it to be mean, you know what I'm saying? And who wants to be mean to kids anyway? That's a very good point. Yeah, so I mean, uh, have you ever thought about, you know, spoiling it, uh, spoiling it for the kids, honey? I, we've never talked about this. This is probably our first time really, really having about, a yeah an yeah. in-depth conversation about this. Um, not really. Um, just because I know I, I mean, I figured it out because I walked in and saw stuff. It wasn't a matter of somebody telling me. It wasn't a matter of me, like, having to ask. It just kind of happened. Um, but for our kids, like you said, one, it's part of the innocence. Like, till you reach a certain maturity level, you don't understand that the concept of Christmas and gifts and giving gifts is generosity and it's sharing and it's loving and it's caring about somebody else enough that you want to give them something you want to see them happy and so as a like Olivia as a seven year old while she's the most generous she's a really generous kid she's a good kid she's everything oh boy she's like she'd give everything she could to yeah. whoever she can but at the same time, like you said, that's part of her innocence. Like, I don't... When she asks, she'll find out. And it's just really that simple. I mean, if she asks next year, she'll find out next year. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to take that away from her just because that's something that she looks forward to. She looks forward to Santa bringing her presents every year. And that's something for her to strive at the end of the year to be good for because... She's seven. She's a kid. Like, she's really a kid. Mm -hmm. Jasmine, she's 11. She's getting to the point where things are starting to click. Like, okay, well, one, we have a chimney, but we don't use it. You know, like, there's stuff in front of the chimney. Like, you know, at one point, the couch was right in front of the chimney. Santa's not going to fit in that little bitty space. True. So, remember where we lived before? We didn't even have a chimney. Exactly. And it still didn't register. But now, as she's getting older, it's literally just starting to come on its own. And that's just maturity. Yeah. And so I, I've never wanted to 
have that taken away from them until they were ready for it. Right, right. Uh, excuse the background noise. Our garbage can, our garbage truck, uh, is coming, and they're coming like pretty early. Yeah. It's a three thirteen in the afternoon, and they usually don't come to about five o'clock. So they're really early today. But yeah. anyway, uh, just excuse the background noise. Um, so yeah, I just never, I just, I just never been one to want to be like. A child like yo, look at me. I did this. Right. Nobody else did. You know, it's just not me. I think you know. Look, man, you can raise your kids however you want to raise them. I, me personally, I just don't believe in that idea. Now, I'm not begrudging anybody who does. You know what I'm saying? Um, hey, raise your kids as long as you raise your kids to not be dirt bags. Then you know what I'm saying. I'm fine with it. You know. Um, like just because you tell your kids the truth, quote unquote, yeah, that doesn't mean that you have to. Your kids need to understand that they don't have to ruin it for somebody who does believe in Santa. Right, right, and it's the same, and it's not just Santa Claus because we have the same thing with the Tooth Fairy too. Like the kids really don't talk about the Easter Bunny, you know no, what I'm saying? They don't. And they pretty much know the reason why we celebrate Easter. Um, it's but pretty uh, much, they know why we celebrate. Yeah, Easter. they know why we celebrate Easter. Um, we celebrate Easter to cel- to uh, celebrate the death and resurrection of, of, of Jesus. Um, but like the tooth fairy, like Jasmine and Olivia, well, because CJ's thirteen and he had, he had lost, a tooth, he in a lost a tooth in a while. So um, you know we haven't had to play the tooth fairy game with him. Um, but Jasmine and Olivia, Olivia still kind of believe in the tooth fairy, and we've kind of inadvertently several times over tried to like you know killed their belief in the two fairy not not on, purpose. not on purpose but because like we forget we straight up like yo we go to bed and they wake up the next morning like the two fairy didn't come and then a lot of times like the last few times especially with Liv the last two times her she's lost a tooth in school and she didn't come home and tell us um so there was no way for us to know exactly no way for us to know so you know she's like hey my tooth came out look I'm like, yo, why didn't you tell me so I could tell the tooth fairy? Uh, I don't know. I'm like, where's the tooth? The tooth fairy got to have some collateral, you know what I'm saying? And she's like, oh, it was at school. And then she'll, like, let it go. And I'll be like, because I'm usually the one that plays tooth fairy. Yeah. Um, Because I just, you know, I just You're hit the kids off too. with a hot $5. And I'm up later, too. Um, Yo, man, $5 per tooth is, you know. I'm glad they slowed down on on, on teeth. losing teeth because that Olivia's about to pick back up. Yeah, but. Liv, because she's got a couple wiggly ones. Okay, we've got enough subject. <laughs> no, I mean, well, yeah. So yeah, the two fairy. That's a part of like you know childlike innocence too that you want to. Y'all seen the Dwayne Johnson movie? Uh, you know what? I ain't even gonna call him Dwayne. He's the Rock to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I smell what the Rock is cooking, and I always have smelled what the Rock is cooking. But the Rock movie, uh, I think it's from like 2005, The Tooth Fairy, you know. So, uh, yeah, man. Um, so, baby, anything else you want to talk about? I'm, I, I don't know if you want to talk more about the Santa Claus thing, but I, I pretty much got out everything else I wanted to say about it. I mean, well, that's, that's it. I mean, it's just your kids have to be understanding and compassionate to the fact that everybody doesn't know that the Tooth Fairy and Santa and... The Easter Bunny aren't real. And so when you tell them the truth, you have to let them know, okay, so this is our little secret. Or it's fine that you know, but you need to know that everybody's not on the same level as you. And to not go back and say, well, you know, Santa Claus isn't real. Oh, y'all dummies. Uh, Santa Claus ain't real. Right. Ha, ha, you and know. Because that's not how you do. That's, yeah, that's not... That's not... You know, it's not nice. It's not. You know, just... So, you know... Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not trying to tell anybody to raise their kids. I'm just... I just want you... Like I said, if you... You raise your kids however you want to, just as long as you don't raise them to be dirt bags, then I have no problem. You know? Um, oh, yeah. Because remember, like I said, I told you... Was that yesterday? I told you about the lady who... Facebook post I read... Um, where she was talking about her, how her daughter transitioned into not believing in Santa. I told you about that, didn't I? I don't think so. Okay. But explain that for the people. So, people who are friends with me on Facebook, they saw it. Um, but 
it was a lady she said that what happened with her daughter was that she transitioned her into saying it by um by you know not saying that santa was real um she told her daughter you know she had done all this selfless stuff and she had helped all these people that year and then she explained how Santa, the actual Santa, there is no Santa Claus himself that comes down your chimney. What happens is that the people who love you and the people who care for you, and they buy you those things, and it's an act of giving, and it's a spirit of giving, and it's a season of giving. And that's why in this season, Santa is so big. Mm-hmm. Because Santa, the the whole story behind Santa, it's a real is behind a real person, and he was just caring and he was giving and he gave what he could to help other people. Um, now, true, Christmas itself has nothing to do with actual Christmas itself has nothing to do with Santa. What do you mean? The reason why we celebrate Christmas is the birth of Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even though we so, know, listen, you know, there are people who will be like, oh, I don't know why y'all, under, you know, celebrate Christmas in December. You know, Jesus wasn't born in December. Yes, we know that. Just right. like Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't born on the first Monday of January. We know that. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Just like Thanksgiving isn't, wasn't, isn't always... The, the the I mean Thanksgiving is always the third Thursday in November. You know, always. I no mean, matter what, no yeah. matter what, no matter what day it is, it could be you know December twenty first. I mean uh, November twenty yeah. first, and we, it could be Thanksgiving. Like this past Thanksgiving, you know, what two weeks ago we celebrated our fourteenth anniversary, and our actual wedding date was, was a on Sunday. a Sunday. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah, we know that. Guys, we know that. Um, so I mean, so, that's the thing, though. Like, yeah. you have to be, you have to be open to. There's a whole lot that you have to be open to once you start explaining different things. Um, like with Jasmine, I'm ready for other questions to come because this is the beginning. Yeah, we got the big sex question that we're gonna sit down and jointly talk to the older two about, um, particularly because. Um, the reason why, well, I mean, like, for the boy, it's time, you know. He's yeah. 13. Like I've told y'all, you know, several times over, I didn't have the, the talk, actually, until I was about 17. Um, because, my, you know, my father died when I was 10, you know. Uh, but then again, I, I did tell you guys a couple of weeks ago, I actually learned what sex was through porn when I was, you know, 10 years old. So, um... But yeah, uh, so we ha- we got that big thing, you know, coming up. Which is another conversation we can have for the podcast. Yes, it is another conversation we can have for the podcast. Um, you know, it just, you know, our kids, like, I, I don't like the, and they're, uh, as I see them, oh no, that's not them yet. I can see them, you know, turning the corner because they, they should be home from, sc- off from uh, home from school in a few minutes. Um, so I'm just patiently anxiously waiting for them to walk through the door um and so today yeah i do have to go to work today but you know i have to go in an hour later than normal so i can see them uh all three of them but uh yeah so you know just got those conversations we have coming up um more podcasts to come (laughs) more podcasts to come i actually have a so you know this is a off subject for today's podcast but you know i always want to push you know, my kids to learn different things, you know what I'm saying? I want to push the kids to learn, you know, to, to take up a, a something else, you know, to get to know something else, right? Um, and since STEM is a big thing, right, I try to, I, you know, in, influence and push my kids into, you know, learning about, like, coding and computers stuff like that, and computers and, and technology. So, um... One of the big, and I just saw them turn the corner. So, uh, our kids are all artistic, like all three of them. They will sit for hours. Wait, this is the intro into next week. So how about we do that? We okay, talk, we yeah, could, we'll we could both be on here next week. Yeah, and this, this talks about uh, a, yeah, and this talks about uh, you Christmas. know, gift giving. So I want to go into that next week. 
Um, so, um, you got anything else? Nope, I'm good. You want to promote your uh, YouTube channel? <laughs> okay. Um, my wife seems really good. I told y'all that before. Um, go ahead and explain it. So I sing, and I have recently decided that I need to put myself out there and actually have um, more videos up, more um, songs. If anybody wants to hear songs, they can request them on other videos. You can message me on Facebook, whatever the case may be. Um, but my name on YouTube is Robin M. R-O-B-I-N M period. Um, so look me up. Let me know if you like the songs. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe like, share, subscribe. Channel. Hit the notification button. Join the notification squad. <laughs> um, that's that's it, ain't it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So this is a surprise. I don't want. I don't want to do the the typical outro song. Which I mean, my <laughs> outro is dope. I want you to bless us with a couple bars as we get out of here today. Of what? I don't know. Whatever song you want to sing, you know what I'm saying. Um, go for it. Whatever. Omg. Okay. First of all, I can sing. I can just break out and sing in any yes, song I you want. Can. That's you, know you. I don't do that. No, I should, but I don't. Whoa, oh, sweet thing. <laughs> That's probably my favorite song of, of for her to sing to me. All right. I'm only doing a verse. Okay. Do a verse. I will love you anyway, even if you cannot stay. I think you are the one for me. Here is where you are to be. I just want to satisfy you. No, you're not mine. I can't deny. Y'all should see the googly eyes Don't I'm making. Don't you hear me talking, baby? Love me now or I'll go crazy. Oh. Oh, I love that song. And I love how she sings it to me. So that, that was my wife. She just hit y'all with a, a little uh, uh, snippet of what of what she can uh, of what she does on her YouTube channel. But she has music. It's not just an acapella cover and stuff like that. As the kids, the older two, come rumbling into the room, they're more quiet and subdued than they normally are, which is amazing. Hello, Jasmine. Hello. Cool. Yeah, uh, so, hi, CJ. Where's the band? Hi, CJ. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Hi. So, uh, say hi. Just say hi. All right. All right. All right. So, so, um, this um, is the Black Dad Chronicles. Uh, once again, if you want to join the conversation, you can send me an email. If you, so, I've kind of gotten away from this. Just last little programming note before I go. I've kind of gotten away from the my initial premise of the podcast, which is to interview and talk to you know black dads about their fatherhood experience. I am letting you know. Uh, it's coming back. It, it truly and honestly is. It's coming back. I'll be honest. I kind of got lazy, um, and you know, start using this as like my personal journal. Hey, wash your hands, please. Okay. Yeah, wash your hands before you go in the refrigerator. What? Where's wash your hands before you go in the refrigerator. Okay, cool. So, um, um, so it's coming back. You know what I'm saying? I got interviews lined up. I'm, I'm trying to just bank a bunch of interviews. So, y'all won't hear me mindlessly rambling on uh, as I am known to do. But, you know, this week had pretty good content. And then here is my young, my oldest daughter, Jasmine, who can never take hold on for an answer. She just always has to be, Mom, Mom, Dad, Dad, Mom, Mom, Dad. Regardless if you say, hey, hold on real quick. You can be on the phone or whatever. This, like right now, I'm, record, I'm trying to end this podcast and she's asking for cookies. And she knows the answer is she knows she can't get cookies. Get something healthy as soon as you walk home from school. Because it's the same thing every single day. But, you know, Jasmine likes to pretend like, you know. She tries to pull. Because I'm a daddy's, you know. Uh, you know, they're okay. daddy's little girls. You know. And so, I give them a lot of leeway. So, she, she really pushes that. Trying to, you know, wrap me around her little finger. So, anyway, like I was saying. If you want to join the conversation, uh, please like, subscribe to uh, the podcast on iTunes. Um, I also have a YouTube page where you can hear the podcast as well. It's just go to YouTube, search my name. Um, you'll see a bunch of comic book videos too. I'm, I'm 
get wrapping that back up. I didn't get a chance to go get any comic books today. I know it's Wednesday, and I would normally tell y'all what I got today. But, hey, my car broke down, so right now my car is in the shop. So, that's why I didn't get a chance to go to the comic book store or the gym today. So, it kind of had me pretty salty. But, you know what? I was able to take a nice long nap. So, anyway. Um, but, yeah. Join the conversation. If you know a dad uh, that you want to have on the podcast, send me an email, blackdadcron, cron, C-H-R-O-N, all one word, blackdadcron at gmail.com. You can also like and comment on the Black Dad Chronicles Facebook page. If you go to Facebook, just search the Black Dad Chronicles, the Black Dad Chronicles. Also on iTunes, you have to put the the in front of Black Dad Chronicles or else it'll bring up a bunch of random stuff that's not my podcast. Um, you can also hit me up on uh, Instagram where it's just a, nothing but a bunch of pictures of me and my family, some food and comic books. Um, Black Dad Chronicles on Instagram and on Twitter if you want to interact there. I, it is uh, My Twitter handle is hi I'm court hi underscore I'm court. Um, so hey, like I said, the wife hit y'all with the outro song this week. Um, so go ahead, hit him with a little bit more, baby. She'll be joining the podcast with me next week, too. So, uh, that's what it is. Y'all, peace, love, and hair grease. <laughs>